In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie.
Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for, this, for some benefit. As a body is one through it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Veni Sancte Spiritus, et emite celitus, lucis tu eradiu. Veni Pater Pauperu, veni Dator Muneru, veni Lumen Cordiu. Consolator optime, dulcis hospes anime, dulcere frigerium. In labore requies, in estu temperies, in fletus solatium. O lux beatissima, replecordis intima, tuorum fidelium. Sine tuo numine, nihil est in homine, nihil est in oxium. Lava codes odidu, riga codes aridu, sana codes aciu, flecte codes rigidu, fove codes rigidu, rece codes deviu, tatu is fidelibus, in te confidentibus sacrum septenarium, da virtutis meritum, da salutis exitum, da perenne gaudium. Amen. Alleluia.
According to John. Glory to you, o Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week. When the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus seated. In the early centuries of the church, there was a movement, the Desert Father movement, perhaps, and its men and women would go out to the Egyptian desert to live a radical life of prayer, of fasting, and of discipline. And there's a story, a legend, perhaps, that comes to us of two such Desert Fathers, Abba Joseph and Abba Lot. And Abba Lot was a little discontent with something, so he went to his senior, Abba Joseph, and he said, good father, I pray every day. I pray the liturgy of the hours as I'm supposed to. I constantly cast from my mind all evil, impure thoughts. I fast often. What more can I do? And Abba Joseph raised his hands to heaven. And as the legend goes, his fingers became like torches of flame. And he said, why not try being fire? Fire, interesting enough that that is how the Holy Spirit chooses to manifest himself to us. And what is it about fire that we can learn about the Holy Spirit? What does fire do? I brought a little more fire and smoke with me today to demonstrate. <laughs> fire brings light, of course. It brings light to the darkness. It brings warmth to the chill. It unites people. You can imagine that same fire on the night that Christ was betrayed People were gathered around that fire in the courtyard of the high priest. It brought people together. It gives them consolation and comfort against the wild beasts out in the wilderness. Fire does all these things. And how fitting that the Holy Spirit then descended upon the apostles in that upper room as fire. It's exactly what they needed. Christ had left. 
Christ had ascended into heaven, and they weren't sure what was going to happen next. They were told to go and wait and pray, a little vague. And the Holy Spirit will come, they were promised, but what that looks like, they had no idea. And so they were united together, and they prayed. And perhaps in that dark upper room, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and the world was changed. The church came to birth. They went out from that room, and that is why we are standing here today, because they went out of that room filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, there's so many important words in our liturgy today. It would be foolish of us to think that we are celebrating a historical event that happened 2,000 years ago. That's part of it. But if we listen closely to the words of the prayers, we know that the Holy Spirit is still working. In our collect prayer, that same Holy Spirit that when the gospel came to birth, pour forth now on the believers. In the preface right before the Eucharistic prayer, we hear that God, bringing the Paschal mystery to completion, poured forth the Holy Spirit today. Not someday 2,000 years ago. No, poured forth the Holy Spirit today. It's this great today of the liturgy that we celebrate, not some dusty historical event in a history book. We are here because God still works. God is still working. God still calls people to be disciples. I remember 50 days ago now, I watched the live stream from time to time, to time in Rome, and our pastor, Father Tom, was lamenting. He gets all these letters for those seeking confirmation, and not once does anyone say, I want an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in my life. How have we been doing the last month and a half? It should really become a daily prayer a prayer of every moment, come Holy Spirit. And so as kind of the bookend of the Easter season, our liturgy says it over and over and over again today. Veni Creator Spiritus, come Holy Ghost. Lord, send out your Spirit, renew the face of the earth. Veni Sancte Spiritus, come Holy Spirit. It is our prayer, and it's also a proclamation of our faith that God is still with us. So let's pray that together now. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Now like you believe it. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. That's very good. Thank you. And if someone were standing a block away, they wouldn't hear you. Now there's two options. We can say it louder and louder in here, or we can go out to the city corners and proclaim it to them. If we only practice our faith in this space, the world will not catch fire. It's plain and simple. And thank goodness the apostles knew that, and they went out from that upper room. They received the gift of the Holy Spirit, and they went out to all corners of the world. The faith has been passed down century by century, and like I said, we are gathered here. At the end of today's Mass, the Easter candle is extinguished and moved back to the baptistry. Not because the Paschal event is over, it's just transformed. God is with us through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit constantly, every moment, every day. The church exists because there is a constant outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Every sacrament of the church has an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which we'll experience again today. No, the fire of the Easter candle at this point now, must take root in our own hearts. That's where that fire goes after today. And that's the prayer that we must pray today and every day of our lives. Now, I don't know if any of this has spoken to you or meant anything to you, but for just a few moments now, in silence, I'm going to leave you and the Holy Spirit to talk it out. Open your hearts. If there's anything that's happened today, or anything that happened yesterday if you were able to make it to the cathedral to celebrate, if there's something that spoke to you, open up your hearts and see, Lord, is there something here you're calling me to? Some new avenue forward in my faith life to bring me closer to you, Lord? Is there something, some ministry in the church, some vocation, some renewed spiritual practice that we are called to? So I leave that with you and the Holy Spirit. 
But in these moments of silence, we just open up our hearts, particularly the most intimate corners of our hearts, the most dry, dark, cold places, because that's the perfect place for fires to begin. And so we just pause for a few moments and we pray that we may be encouraged, that we may be strengthened. As Christ said in the gospel, peace be with you. We pray that we may be at peace, but of course we pray that we may be fire. I believe in one God, God Almighty, Maker and Earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on this assembly, we offer our Heavenly Father our prayers and petitions. For all who are ordained, for Father Ryan Glazer as he begins his ministry, and for our pastor, Father Tom, who celebrates his 33rd anniversary of ordination on Pentecost, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide and strengthen them and all priests. We pray to the Lord. Lord for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, consecrated religious life, and holy matrimony, May young men and women confidently and courageously respond to the Lord's call for their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of peace, that God will break hatred in human hearts, end violence, and establish a season of peace in areas of conflict and war. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of mercy, that we may reach out to those burdened by illness, poverty, disasters, or violence, and show the face of God to them through our compassion and support. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For a spirit of hope, particularly for those who are overwhelmed by life and experiencing anxiety or depression, may they find support and care from others. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who are graduating from every level of education, may they celebrate their achievements and look forward to new challenges. We pray to the Lord. For healing, that the Spirit will heal the sick and give strength to all who care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, and for Phyllis Glazer, for whom this Mass is offered, grant them the fullness of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions we hold in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Draw near, Heavenly Father, to these prayers we bring before you. Pour out the Holy Spirit upon us and answer them according to your most holy will. For you live and reign forever and ever.
Yeah. 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire, ending communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the mother of our God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, 
John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and their prayers and all things we may be defended by their protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant Phyllis, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and rests in the sleep of peace. Grant her, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, through those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, 
Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The Lord, I am not worthy that you should have turned my word, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. 
Father Glazer, why um, it is definitely a valid mass. It would not be listed without parish announcements. So some reminders for the community. Uh, first of all, we hope you can all join us on the lower level in Archangel's Hall for reception following mass. Father will be greeting people down there. Uh, for those who are not familiar with our church, there is an elevator in the entry way back here. There are also stairs back here. It's a glorious day. You can go around outside. Either way, we hope to see you downstairs after Mass. Our Memorial Day Mass will be at St. Michael's Cemetery at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Father Glazer will be the presider. Bring a lawn chair. Our last all-school Mass for the academic year will be Wednesday at 7.50 a.m. Again, Father Glazer will be the presider. That is uh, a, a first, a very important first, in that while we have had some wonderful priests and an archbishop from the parish before, we have never had a St. Michael Catholic School alumni come back to celebrate the Mass. So we're looking forward to that first. <clears throat> As most of you know, we will be heading back to Jimbote Bru very soon. So those, uh, we, as a part of that, we have a diaper drive next weekend, particularly need small diapers. So again, all those parish announcements, please check out the bulletin and the website as you usually do. Uh, finally, again, Father Ryan. I love calling you that. Um, it is delightful. I can tell by the crowd here that it is a special occasion, but there's a sign of an extraordinary blessing, which I have not seen in my eight years here, in that Judy Menden is actually sitting in the second pew and not back there. <laughs> and I, I pray wherever you end up over the years that you have Judy Mendens in your parish to help you along the way. 
Um, we are, uh, uh, again, d delighted that you have chosen to have your first Mass with us where you grew up. Um, as I mentioned the school earlier, I have to, you, you didn't hear my apology, apology yesterday. Um, about 20 years ago, uh, Father Ryan's family thought they would enroll him in our Catholic school, as, as a good little Catholic boy should do. And uh, Jerry got in line at 2 o'clock in the morning uh, to be one of the few that could get in. Ryan did not make the cut. So uh, uh, I officially apologized to your parents last night. Fortunately, by, thank by Christmas, he was in, and I hope you've forgiven us by now. Um, beyond that, again, we are, I'm so sincere and, and delighting to have you here for, sounds like your first three Masses at least, and uh, I hope when you're even 10,000 or more down the road that you continue to know this is your home and you are always welcome here. The only other piece of advice, I'm sure you've got so much, but I would respectfully suggest that the most important thing that you've learned, I know you learned many things at St. John Vianney Seminary. I, I know Father has learned many things, I'm sure, over at the North American College in Rome. But I still think, being a priest now for 33 years, the most important thing he learned, he learned from Angie. <laughs> that is, and I'm serious here, throughout your life, Father, always keep your eye on the director. There is one director in heaven, and, and, and very seriously here, it gets busier and busier and busier. Tend to your prayer. Tend to your prayer. Don't, don't ever let that go. Um, and when things get a little too overwhelming, remember to go back there. There is also one director here on earth to whom you and I have promised our respect and our obedience. And I hope you, like I have tried to do, will accept every assignment you receive with joy. Love the people the Archbishop gives you to love. It's worked really well for me for 33 years. Congratulations. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. A few thank yous of my own. First of all, thank you so much, Father Tom, for letting my, my posse come in today and uh, uh, do what we wanted to do. Um, it's been, I think, a very beautiful Mass, a wonderful opportunity for me to celebrate here at the parish. You know, we've sat different places over the years. We went from the first pew where the Langs are, or the Jepsons are, uh, back a few pews, then over there now. So um, it's kind of a new seat for me up here. But uh, thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, for all of those who helped make this uh, liturgy special, especially Judy Menden, thank you so much for your many years of service. I wanted to make it easier for you to retire, so we gave you a really stressful big event uh, right at the end of it. Um, I hope you get the much desired rest now um, and, and happy retirement coming up, so thank you so much for that. Um, Angie and the choir, thank you so much for all of your patience uh, with the music requests I submitted. Angie emailed me in August last year. Um, saying we should probably start planning this now because I have a feeling you're going to want a few things we don't know. So I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for you uh, accommodating my requests, and uh, I hope uh, I hope everyone uh, prayed today. You know, with music, it's uh, it's very easy to worship God with a wonderful choir such as all of you. So thank you for all the work. Even with the Latin, the Latin sounded impeccable. So thank you so much for the brass we brought in. Thank you so much for being here, really adding a triumphant, joyful element to this great feast of Pentecost. Um, for all the many other, uh, my brother seminarians who have uh, helped out today, uh, for Deacon Frankie, he was my roommate a few years ago. He's got another mass to buzz off to now as well, so he's a, a hot commodity right now, um, these new deacons and stuff, but your day will come. Your day will come. Um, yeah, for all my family and friends who've come in from all over the place, 
Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming. Um, my brother priest, thank you for coming in such great numbers. Uh, yeah, and all the parishioners who've prayed me through uh, my many years of my life and uh, my years of seminary now, thank you for your continued prayers. Um, I invite you all to be seated for a moment. There's just two more thank yous, I suppose, that are really important, and in a special way, uh, we need to acknowledge uh, the role my, my mom and dad played in getting me to this moment. Um, no one gets to this point uh, without an incredible amount of support and love and nurturing, which began decades and decades before seminary formation. So there's just a few um, small token gifts um, for mom and dad uh, that can't even begin to actually uh, repay you for all that you have given to me uh, and that you will continue to give me. But uh, hopefully their symbolic meaning uh, means a little more. Um, at the ordination mass, um, after the prayer of ordination, um, Archbishop anoints your hands with chrism oil. It's the same oil used for a baptism and confirmation um, that these hands now sanctify. And uh, afterwards, they give you a, a cloth, a manaturgium to, to wipe your hands off with, a little piece of laundry. Um, and so uh, it's a fitting, uh, a fitting gift for my mother, who in her own, in her own hands has held me over the many years uh, from childhood, uh, has given me life and brought me into this world, the greatest gift of all. Uh, taking care of me all the times when I'm sick, when I'm frustrating, um, you know, and for the many sacrifices, particularly uh, these past few years, um, if you imagine it's hard being away from home, imagine having a son away from home for four years, soon to be five, in Rome. So um, a small repayment for uh, your many sacrifices and love of me. Um, Mom, this one will be for you. And not to forget Dad, um, to the man who taught me to be a man, and whose fatherhood, I pray, I get to be as a spiritual father. Um, as every, uh, every priest, you know, is dealing in the world of the sacramental. And uh, yesterday I had the opportunity to hear my first confession and wore this stole. Um, and so, uh, to the man who gave me my unfortunate sense of humor, anyone can <laughs> direct any complaints towards him. Um, but Dad, thank you again for your sacrifices, for your love and support over these years as uh, as, as golf coach, basketball coach, uh, life coach, um, father, and of course, best friend. So thank you for that. And the prayer is then, um, when, when you pass from this life, um, these, these will go with you. So when you stand before God um, and he asks you, what, welcome my servants, what have you done for me? You may say, I gave you my son as a priest. all been doing such a wonderful job chanting the Mass today. There's just a solemn blessing left which requires a little bit more chanting, so I invite you to stand and uh, to do your best. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who is pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.